But, but you know, I, there's something I do want to touch on. I, I mean, we can talk about um, electric cars all day long, but I don't actually get the chance to talk to uh, the everyday astronaut, everybody. <laughs> uh, everybody's kind of like probably interested more in, um, in the, the, um, uh, the moonshot that you're going on. Maybe you could uh, give us some background on that. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, so I was, I was chosen to participate in a mission called Dear Moon, which will be a flight around the moon. Uh, we won't be landing on the moon. We're going to fly do a lunar flyby, um, which I, I'm totally fine with. I mean, I would be totally fine with anything. Um, and, and to be clear here, at the, to kind of tee this up, I, this has never been a thing for me. Like I was never, I was not that kid growing up that wanted to go to space. I was not that adult that grew up thinking I was going to go to space or pursue it. Um, even even as I'm developing the channel and, and talking about space flight constantly and stuff, it wasn't still wasn't like a thing that I was trying to do, really. It's just sort of, to be honest, like the, the opportunity kind of came up as like, you know, they're asking for uh, basically to me, it feels like Willy Wonka for space where <laughs> an individual, you know, uh, named Yusaku Maezawa, we call him MZ, uh, a Japanese uh, entrepreneur. Uh, had purchased a ride around the moon in 2017 already from SpaceX. And believe it or not, that announcement of someone buying a seat to go around the moon is the reason that I started the YouTube channel in 2017 to make a video explaining this exciting announcement that someone bought a seat around the moon. It was like the coolest thing. So literally that's the first time I like set up a camera and just, you know, made a video explaining something. It was only three minutes long and I'm yelling at the camera. It's a hor horrible video. Please don't find it. Uh, but that, inspired me to get into this a lot more deeper uh, deeply and uh and start explaining you know and trying to explain things about space flight and um come to 2021 and they had an an open application because it kind of changed originally it was supposed to fly on the falcon heavy here um with a dragon capsule on top spacex uh come about 2018 2019 they, they basically said hey we're not going to crew rate the falcon heavy and they moved Yusaku's flight off of a crew dragon capsule, being able to hold two people to and on a Falcon Heavy to, hey, we're gonna we're working on Starship. If you just give us a few years, you'll you can fly however many people you want, really. Realistically, this thing can hold dozens of people comfortably because mm -hmm. it's a thousand cubic meters internally. The internal volume's more than a 747's internal volume uh, for pressurized volume. It's freaking huge. Wow, I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. And they basically said, give us time. If you if you wait, you know, you, you can choose as many people as you want. And so it turned into this mission called Dear Moon, where he wanted to uh, he did an he in 2018 um, did a call for, you know, saying we're going to be inviting artists and dancers and uh, communicators and photographers and filmmakers and musicians, all these different things. We want to bring these people. I, I want to invite them to come with to the moon with me, basically is what he said, as a way to inspire and, and reach the world in a way that's never been done before. And we, that was kind of the last we heard about it until about all of a sudden 2021, they're like, hey, we're actually going to do open applications for this. And that was news to me. You know, at this point, I thought it was all going to be invite only. You know, here's a, a well-connected uh, individual that I thought was just going to be calling up, you know, James Cameron. And, you know, LeBron James or something, I have no idea, you know, calling all these people up on the phone and just saying, hey, I'm going to take you to the moon with me. And that was going to be the end of it for the average person. Come to find out, though, in 2021, he did an open invite uh, saying submit an application and a video application. And they went through over a million applications. And yeah, I read that. Yeah. Through through about uh, it was a long time. It was about nine month process. They whittled it down. A whole team of people whittled it down. And now there's. Uh, there's basically eight of us that are that were chosen then to to go around the moon. Monsters. So what what sort of preparations do you? Uh, I mean, in the olden days, you used to see this thing spinning around with a guy going, uh, "Why did I sign up for this stuff?" <laughs> but uh, but do you have to do anything, or is it just kind of like uh, you know? Grab a couple of pairs of underwear and you're on your way. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the... not quite as simple as, say, some of the modern space tourism with, you know, the suborbital things like Virgin Galactic and, and Blue Origin uh, with their new Shepard. It's not as it's not quite as simple as, you know, show up a day early, learn how to strap in and then enjoy the ride. Basically, you know, this is a lot more involved. We don't know. Uh, we don't have our exact training regimen down where I think we're at this point. We're, we're still waiting for Starship to mature enough 
to be able to, you know, have the systems in place to really know how the training is going to go and how, you know, all of the things involved there. But um, if, if we look at the other commercial missions, such as um, Inspiration4, Axiom missions, it tends to be about six months. And those are those are Dragon missions that, that have been private missions so far. Um, it's been it's been about six months of training. And I'm kind of in my head, I'm thinking it'll be around that amount of time, even though we, we will purely be tourists. Like, let me let me make it clear. We're not you know, we're not training to be professional astronauts, blah, blah, blah. We're basically taking a joy ride. But when it is a trip around the moon, you, there's still a lot of considerations and a lot of things that, uh, you know, we'll need to know how to do things safely and how to safely operate and and uh, live in a vehicle for a week. Yeah. Well, uh, to me, it's like brilliant. I, I think it's just absolutely fabulous that somebody with um, a lot of money is going to do something with it that Mm, except for self gratification, I mean, that's that's kind of what you usually see. Um, but there's actually there's very very few, um, what would I call them? I don't know, just leaders that that pop up. You got Elon, and um, and man, it's a it's a short list. Like in the car industry, the only we were talking about Ford, but Jim Farley. Pff, I mean, nobody knows anybody else in the auto industry. Nobody. I, I mean, if you ask people, some some people might say Mary Barra because she's had the job for a long time. But man, she the last time I saw her was when uh, she announced that she's going to be using the um, the Tesla charging system. <clears throat> Everybody else is in hiding. You never. Yeah. Nobody knows she's in charge of BMW or or Chrysler right. or whatever, and nobody knows any of these because they're not leaders. Yeah. They're kind of like, mm, get that little office. And <laughs> <laughs> they don't get out much, yeah. Right. I, I mean, it's funny, the space flight aspect, I don't know if it brings out the best in some people or if it's just because it's that you have to be kind of at the top to be, you know, reaching for something so yeah. audacious as space flight. But uh, there's been some incredible people come through. I mean, Jared Isaacman from inspiration four and now Polaris one, two, and three. I just was riding, doing fighter jet training with him last weekend in Montana. And he's ridden <laughs> me around in a MiG 29 with afterburners pulling seven over seven G's. Wow. And yet the guy is the most down to earth. One of the, you know, the greatest leaders I've, I've personally ever met. And I think in my opinion, you know, they raised $250 million for St. Jude children's research hospital with their, with yeah. their mission. Yeah. I think that's one of the coolest things ever. He's not only doing that, but also they're trying to, they're doing a study to see if as a private company and as a private mission, they're trying to fix, repair and reboost the Hubble space telescope totally free to the taxpayer, which to me is like the coolest thing ever. Yeah, and exactly. so I, it's just so cool between, you know, Jared, what he's working on and what Yusaku is doing with his generosity and inviting people to, you know, to experience something, to share that with the rest of the world. I think we're just coming upon this time of, I hope that it, people feel that, ex, you know, the celebration of that and the excitement and, and hope and joy, because I think it's something to, to be excited about. Well, this is a, this is a thing though. I mean, most of the guys that you hear that are incredibly wealthy, what do they do for society? I mean, oh, I gave away some money and then you find, you work out the taxes. He gave it away so he didn't have to pay taxes. So blah, blah. It, it, it he probably wound up with more, more pocket change than he needed. And, and yet you've got other guys like this fellow here that, that, that rates for St. Jude is one of my, <clears throat> I, I give to uh, quite a number of charities and St. Jude is up there. They're, they're oh. them and uh, Salvation Army get probably the most, uh, most of my money. But at the end of the day, uh, you don't really hear about people, Andy Tom or Danny Thomas kind of guys that he's the one who started the St. Jude movement you don't hear too much about them anymore. They, they kind of, uh, they vanished, um, mm -hmm. you know, so they can buy another big yacht or something. I don't know. But uh, to me, every time I hear about somebody like this, I just think, you know, there's somebody going to heaven, got a whole bunch of money, but, um, I think the gates will open for, for this guy. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just fun too, to just see the, the progress, you know, to, to see that, um, that there is commercial interest in in some of these space missions. And it's not just, you know, uh, multi-billion dollar NASA missions. Yeah. And obviously nothing against NASA because that's wh why we are where we are today. And, and actually yeah. set up the, the commercial crew program, which really helped usher in the possibility of any of this stuff. But man, it's fun to watch it where where there's actually, you know, people buying these missions, going 
uh, doing exciting things in space flight and actually put not only that, but actually pushing the boundaries right. um, through the commercial sector is really cool and really exciting. And I hope that it, I hope that people, you know, I hear a lot of things about, you know, like billionaire joyride types of things. And I understand the cynicism there, but when you kind of step back and look at where we're going to be in 50 and 100 years, I think these are going to be the, the history makers here.